Welcome back, guys, to another Self Made Vapes video. I'm Jay. I'm Ian. I'm Mac. And today we're bringing you the uh, Crixus by Horizon Tech. Oh, yeah. So, this is a tank, sub ohm tank, that Mac purchased. And uh, what inspired you to purchase this? Um, I mean, vape dot deals, of course. Um, but I've been hearing a lot of rumbling in the, the vapor community about these ceramic coils that last, you know, 70 years in a night. This and is a I, different kind of tank, basically. Yeah, it's a whole new material that is apparently lasts much longer in vaping, and I thought I'd give it a try. It was a good deal, good price. I think I paid about 28 bucks. Vape that deals, of course. And, uh, yeah, that's essentially it. So this is a ceramic tank, or sub ohm tank, that, what wire does it use? Um, it is a ceramic coil. It has tungsten components, um, which again, a tungsten is apparently another thing. I haven't had much experience with that as well, but it's another big fad in vaping. Um, but yeah, ceramic tungsten and Japanese sounds, cotton. Sounds fancy. Yeah, very fancy. Tungsten. So fancy, we're going to dive down and see what it's about. So as you can see from the close-up, here we have the packaging, Horizon Tech, Crixus, rebuildable ceramic coil. So what exactly is rebuildable? Well, you don't rebuild the coils, but you can disassemble the coil and re-wick it with the included cotton. And I'm assuming if you have your own Japanese cotton, you can cut it down to size and, and do that as well. But it comes with several or you can small use the strips. Supplied cotton. Exactly. It comes with several small strips of Japanese cotton that you can wrap around it. Nice. So let's take off the sleeve. It's stuck. Yeah, it's it's tight. Uh-huh. That's what she said. Yes. Yes, they do. So on the back we have uh, some words. Reusable high temperature durable ceramic coil head. Top build capacity for four mils. Which is solid. It's not the best, but it's. I think four is, to me, it should be uh, a standard these days. Four I agree. Four milliliters. Yeah, that should be standard. It used to be five, but... Especially with sub ohming, you don't want anything smaller. I mean, it, you go through juice fast. So on the back kind of gives you a, an overview or a little diagram and some words. So let's go ahead and open it up. We have a, first thing we see is a little pamphlet, which it says, um, what does it say? Extremely limited information. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice. Very small <laughs> pamphlet. So we have a resistance at 0.3 ohms, plus or minus 0.1. Heating part is made of tungsten wire. And uh, the resistance will increase when temperature rises, blah, 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 material. Yeah, we don't need those. So, we also have some um, pictures. We love pictures. Much better than words. Yeah. Boo to literacy. Exactly. <laughs> you know what, guys? You manufacture tanks. If you ever do a pop up book and not use a tank, <laughs> that'd be awesome. We love pop up books. We will buy the crap out of that. So uh, here we have some stuff, uh, cleaning, uh, replacing, uh, yeah, so set this aside. Yeah, we'll let you guys read that when you purchase the product, if you purchase the product. <laughs> so inside we have the, um, what is this, organic Japanese, Japanese cotton. cotton. We have another coil head, and we, we have a spare tank, and what is this, ceramic? Um, the glass is glass. standard glass according to the website. It's see-through yeah. glass. It is a glass tank. And honestly, to be honest, you know, whether it's quartz or whatever it may be, Pyrex, if you drop it, it's probably going to shatter. So I don't it's really know. It's the breakable know. type yeah, of Yeah, it's going to break. I don't really know if that's a big deal these days, right? I, mean, I agree. But, you know. Maybe, nice maybe certain juice cracking, juice crackers, or excuse me, tank cracking juices, may, it may be more resistant. But honestly... I haven't had much experience with just juices shattering glass. Cinnamon happens. and stuff like that, it does right. crack it happens, tanks. But... but I don't think you'll have a problem. It feels, it feels solid. We have O-rings here and grommets uh, in case you decide to replace them and use this tank for a while. So it's nice to have that. Uh, we have this extra coil. And... In case you break a coil. Yep. Break a coil. Yeah, shit happens, right? Yeah, you can break the coil. True. Not... <laughs> And then we have the star of the show, which is the actual sub ohm tank itself. So we if have, it doesn't look pristine, it's because it's not. <laughs> I've been vaping on it, so yeah, we like to try out our <laughs> try it after we, you buy it. Yeah. 
So let's get down to what we have here. So stainless steel construction, nice tip. In fact, it's a Delrin 510, big, big O-ring or grommet on it. So nice sealing, and uh, this more than likely helps with heat dissipation. Let's go ahead and put this camera. And then we have this. So we have adjustable airflow. And the airflow is fluid, no detent, so it's no, no clicking. You just slide it nice and fluid. So Is that dual Cyclops airflow? <laughs> no, it's Triclops airflow. Oh, it's three of them? My, my bad. <laughs> no, I just totally made that shit up. Oh. Pulled it out of my ass. Oh, it might be quad. Oh, we were both wrong. <laughs> yeah, there are four air holes in the bottom. <laughs> we were both wrong. We should add that out. And also, if you show them down the, um, the actual chamber, the chimney, uh, it has built-in spitback protection. Honestly, I've had spit back though, so I don't know what's going on there, but I've vaped on it and I've had juice shoot back up, hot ass juice for, to, to be very clear, it gets very hot with this tank. Most, most tanks that say they have spit back protection still have spit back, so surprise. Yeah. Mac likes hot juice in his face. Oh God. Cut, oh, we gross. need to redo this video. So, <laughs> let's go and take this thing apart. Unscrew the top, and we have a nice top piece right here, grommet or O-ring at the top. Very smooth, fluid uh, threading, so machine very well. We have knurling here, so it helps grip it. So let's go ahead and grab that and untwist that. And we have the coil. That's some very dense cotton. Very dense cotton. Yeah, I agree. In fact, it looks almost bulletproof. like plastic, but uh, it... Obviously has to work, you know? Yeah. It's supposed to last six months. Ceramic is supposed to be very, um, I guess, heat resistant, right? I have some tweezers that are ceramic that, you know, you can hold a quail and fire it and oh, yeah. you don't feel really anything. Yep. Ceramic handles a lot of heat. There's that. And then let's go ahead and unscrew this. If I can actually get it undone. So... <laughs> We had a bit of trouble with that. One. We had a bit of trouble. Just a bit. Just a bit. Just a tip. So, <laughs> more o rings. Helps the seal. Take the tank off. There's a lot of pieces to this tank for some reason. It's not as bad as the, uh, what was that, K Fun? The K Fun. Holy crap. Sweet. We're digressing, but sweet mercy. So, yeah, nice solid construction. All threading is smooth. Uh, the finishing, it looks like you can vape on from the get go. I know Mac has vaped on it already, but it seems very clean. Was there any oily residue when you first opened it up? No, it was very clean. Yeah, it, it, I almost didn't wash it or, you know, soak it in hot water, wipe it down. It was very clean. It didn't seem like there was any machine oil or, or metal bits or anything like that. Toxic so, residue. Yeah. So we have these four holes here, and what's all that about? Um, that's essentially where the, the, the juice um, enters in and um, saturates the, the coil or the, the wick. You don't really have any juice control, but you have some really big holes. I wish there was juice control. I've seen some leakage, actually quite a bit of leakage. I, don't, I haven't tried the second coil. Maybe it's a defunct coil or maybe I didn't screw something in tight enough. Maybe an O-ring is bad. I don't know, grind it, whatever. But I've had some serious leaking that I was... Pretty disappointed with. I was, I honestly was disappointed with the leaking, especially from a sub ohm. You would think that with most sub ohms, in my limited experience, that they don't leak as much. But yeah, I've definitely had some serious leaking, like handfuls of e liquid juice. That well, yeah, it was gross. Entire bottles of yeah, juice. it was nasty. Handfuls of juice. So this is how it is. Take it apart. Not very difficult to me. Uh, it seems like it's very straightforward. Even first time vapor should be able to get this uh, real quick disassembly and reassembly. Granted, when it was put together, we had to put some wrenches on it to kind of break it apart. But you know what? After that, broke the seal, good to go. And to be and to be very clear, I may have over tightened something when I was initially, you know, taking it apart, filling it up, etc. I don't think it's supposed to be that hard. But we yeah, we had to soak it in hot water and. You gotta get like a plier or something with <laughs> channel locks, ladies and gentlemen. Jaws of life. Jesus. Channel locks. Use them. So we take the coal off, and as you can see from the base, very standard. Uh, just threads right in. And uh, no adjustable 510 pin, which I don't know if that's a pro or con. Doesn't really matter. I guess it depends on the mod that you're using, but no, not a con for me whatsoever. Without regulated mods. So. 
I like it. I mean, so far the fit and finish seems up to up to par. You know, I, I feel that they put this together well. It was well designed. But you know, the only way to tell if it works is to put it together, fill some knee juice in it, and have Mac vape on it. So let's do that right now. Put a coil in here. Oh yeah, do we want to go over any stats on this thing or? Yeah, while I'm while while I'm reassembling, Mac, why don't you tell us something about it? So we All already right. in the juice capacity is what four mils. Uh, yes, it's a four mil tank. Again, pretty good, pretty solid. I think that's at least, that's what all tanks should strive for these days. Um, but yeah, it's ceramic, obviously, with, with tungsten components. Um, 22 millimeter diameter, so it's, you know, pretty, pretty slim. Uh, 510 thread, obviously, top fill design. Uh, you have your adjustable airflow, glass tank, um, the Japanese organic cotton. I think we've actually covered all of this already. The drip tip has the uh, the Delrin and I guess stainless on the outside. And apparently the claim is that with ceramic it can last for six months. Six months. I find that hard to believe because... With the way he vapes. The way I vape and you know most sub-ohm coils say that you can, you can use a coil for like a month, three, two, three weeks, I don't know. They always claim that they last longer than they do. Um, I expect it'll be similar. Depends on how long you vape, right, how right. hard you vape. I vape a lot. I'm thinking I'll get maybe three months out of it before it just tastes like a, a, a bag of unwashed socks. I don't know, but we'll see. The claim is six months. You just have to change out the cotton. Um, another point is that I hear the um, re-wicking. This particular, this particular model is tricky. I have not done that yet. Um, but I will do a follow-up and um, I will try to re-wick one of these ceramic coils because obviously you can't use the same cotton for six months. I agree. So, as you saw while I put it together, very straightforward, went together well, uh, put the coil in, uh, the insignia and the branding is all silk screened on, not laser etched, so there's no embossing or indentations on the actual tank but you know it's nice horizon tech as you can see from the close-up and then the, the same as this one that's right oh yeah they did the uh that's the same brand yeah, as the yeah. arctic so v the transformer tank right no not this one. Oh, sorry Wrong so to tank. fill this you have to literally take off the top right yeah simple top fill um that's where i've noticed most of my leaking is when i when i fill it and i Maybe there's a method you have to close off the airflow. I've been doing that lately, closing off the airflow, filling it up, putting the top on, turning it upside down, and then opening up the airflow. And it still leaks. Yeah, I, that'll be on my <laughs> follow-up as well, see if I've mastered that. But I've had some serious leaking, and I've looked online. Other people have actually experienced the same issue, so it's not a leak-free tank, for sure. At least not right now. Not in my experience, right. All right. Fair enough, but you can see the juice channels to, to put your e-juice or your e-liquid in, it's, Looks they're big, easy. yeah. So, dropper or, uh, hell, that's all they're doing now, right? Droppers. Anything, yeah. Droppers, straight up little bottle drippers, whatever. And also another thing is with ceramic, obviously, you can do wattage or temperature control. Which, yes, and that's a good point, is that uh, we had Mac vaping on this for about a week. And I asked him if it was TC, temperature control, and he didn't know. I did not know. I purchased it because it was ceramic, not because it was temperature control or wattage. But when you put it on your Snow Wolf, what did it say? Well, my Snow Wolf was kind of, maybe my chipset or maybe just glitchy because I've dropped this bad boy. He's I don't dropped know. It. Yeah, I've done, I put it through the ringer. And uh, with the Snow Wolf for mine, like if I throw a... Um, a wattage tank on there when I put the new tank on there it'll always start in temperature control mode and I hold power fire button and it will convert to power mode with this one if I throw it on there and it's in temperature control mode sometimes when I hold fire it will convert to power mode sometimes it'll stay in temperature control mode I prefer temperature control mode with this tank because the vape just seems more consistent um, the, the cloud, the, the, the vapor production, the flavor is better for me with this tank in temperature, con temperature control mode. But again, with, with my um, Snow Wolf, sometimes it, it seems like maybe it doesn't know what it's supposed to do. So it just picks one. And uh, when it converts to power mode, I have to take it off, put it back on, 
recognize a new coil and hope that it stays in temperature control mode. Again, this could be my mod. I've had it for a while. I've dropped it. I've we got. Hope, we hope it's just that. I've mod. had juice spilled into the battery compartment, and who knows, you know. But in my experience, that tank is much better in TC mode, about 440 degrees Fahrenheit. Nice. Um, and it seems to be much more consistent that way. So Snow Wolf auto detects it, right? And that's what Mac has pretty much baked on this tank since he bought it. So let's go ahead and fill it up and see how it actually bakes on camera. Let's do that. In fact, wait, what are you vaping on right now? Um, I am vaping on a wattage, my Griffin. Love this tank. I know my review was kind of lukewarm, but I've grown to love this tank. <laughs> um, but this is straight wattage. You know, this is straight um, Canthal coils in here. And um, yeah, so, and oh, mat Matriarch's milk. Nice. <laughs> it's a knockoff uh, recipe. This is a clone recipe. Oh. And I'm still rocking the cuboid with my TFE4. And guess what? Ian has a cuboid as well. Ta-da. And I will have a cuboid soon. I love that. I love this. About three device. years I have a cuboid. And you have the cuboid and the Arctic V8, right? Yeah, I have the Arctic V8 on here. And um, I still have a little bit of I Love Donuts juice left in it. And I am baking on the creme de mint recipe we did in one of our previous videos. If you haven't checked it out, check it out now. Straightforward, very fast, quick recipe to get you going for the night. So enough talk. Let's see how this vapes. Let's do it. Should we pause while we do this? Nah. All right. Well, let's fill this bad boy up. We are not pausing. Now we did. I've used this uh, coil. Actually, I want to go back to the coil that I used. So he, he, he put the yeah. He put the. Oh, you already did. Great. Yeah. Great. It doesn't look nice and clean like the new coil does. Looks dirty and grungy. Like We're going to be using a fresh bottle of mixed juice. All right, so it went to power mode again. So when, I, when, it, when, it, when the snow wolf goes to power mode, I crank up the wattage to get a better vape. But I'm going to even go a little bit. Let's go up to 70. Again, I do this because temperature control just seems to be better for the ceramic, in my opinion. This particular combination, anyway. I'll let you vape. So being as this is the first ceramic coil for SMV, what is the flavor profile like? How does it vape in comparison to our conventional pre-made coils or our titanium, nickel, canthal bills? Platinum? No, I haven't vaped on platinum. Oh, never mind. Too rich for my blood. Well, I mean, I guess to address that, you have to, I guess, talk about what they claim. It's a pure flavor, apparently. And a lot of reviewers that I've seen, I've read on, they say that it's a really pure flavor. Pure um, flavor. Yeah, they say it's a really clean, pure, pure tasting flavor, flavor that doesn't have any, I don't know, it just doesn't have anything, any extra crap in it. Um, I, I, I'm going to say yes, right? Um, I vaped it the first time. It didn't taste that good to me. It tasted way different. Maybe that's because it was just so clean. The cleaner, breaking. Yeah, maybe cleaner than Canthal, maybe cleaner than titanium or, or nickel, whatever. It tasted different. Um... Do I think, in my opinion, that it's superior to other wires? I don't know if I could say that yet. It's a good vape. I do enjoy the vape. When, I, when, I, when I'm using a temperature control device or when the Snow Wolf is cooperating, I love the vape. It's really good, especially with the Creme de Mint. That's the only thing that I've vaped in this so far. I like it. Um, but it does have a very long break-in period. When I first, the first coil I put in here, it took me... Like a day, I guess, oh, before wow. I really liked it. And the way I vape, that's, that's a saying lot. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's good. It's good. It's it, ta it does taste a bit different than other tanks, and I guess that could be because of purity, or it just it may be because it's tungsten and ceramic. Maybe it just tastes different. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's different. I do like it. After you get past the break-in period, I do enjoy it, and I, I think I recommend that you use it on a temperature control setting versus a, a power or a wattage setting. So it's a different vape experience, would you agree? And for you guys that are on the fence, in fact, where did you get it from? Um, I got this from vape.deals, and it was a deal through um, um, Isig Avenue. Isig Avenue. And what did it cost? Um, out the door, it cost me 28 bucks. I had a, a coupon code that reduced it by, I think, maybe 3 bucks or something like that. So out the door, shipping included. It cost me about $28. And bad. the really good thing about Isig Avenue, holy shit. They ship fast. They ship fast. 
I ordered it like on a Monday and I got it Thursday or Friday. Um, we're gonna do a video on Costa Rica. I had to buy a cheap mod and I needed to, to buy it that week before I went to Costa Rica. I got it before I went to Costa Rica that same week. The shipping is amazing. So again, all subjective. I probably, if I want to try ceramic, I may purchase a coil or a tank like that, but at the same time, I'm happy with what I have. So is it worth, to me, diving into that? No, I'm content with my TFE4. But at the same time, if you don't have a TFE4 or you're on the, the border of trying to get into what's new in vaping, you may want to try it out. It may be worth a shot. And like you said, you're going to try to get a ceramic, and we can compare, like the Dolphin, I think, is one out there. There's a bunch of stuff out there. There's about there's... three or four as of right now. That we're aware of. Yeah, yeah. And, and the market is coming out with something every week, so we'll see if there's something that catches our eyes. We don't buy everything. Wait, hold on, hold on. Something just came out right now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, check it out. So that note, guys, I, I'm on the fence. Mac, you'd say yay or nay? I'll say yay, um, but again, it's not necessarily something that I would just say you absolutely have to buy. And Ian? I would say it's worth it due to the longevity of the, of the coil. Well, the, the stated longevity of it. And um, there's probably going to be more tanks in the future with ceramic yep. coils or cores. And I'll probably get one. So. And you know what? When, when Mac actually gets a deep dive into it and actually does a one-to-one, -one, he'll let you guys know if anything happened, any reservations, whatever the case may be. But for now, it seems solid. Again, I'm not sold in it. But if I had no choice or I'm looking for something new, maybe something I'll purchase. If you don't have this right now, maybe worth getting. Agreed. Yeah. So uh, on that note, guys. Uh, so guys, uh, enough rambling. Uh, yeah. If you like the video, thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Mm -hmm. And uh, guess what? We appreciate y'all watching. Y'all have a great night.